Late last year, Qatar Airways agreed to acquire 60% stake of the new Bugesera International Airport in Rwanda, Africa. The stake was valued at $780 million. The only problem is, the airport is incomplete. In fact, it is still in the initial stages of construction. This whole agreement leaves many unanswered questions. Why is tiny Rwanda building a new airport? Does the country even need it? Even if there is a need, why would it sell the new airport to a foreign airline instead of handing control to its own airline Rwanda? Why would Qatar Airways, a world leading airline, buy an unfinished airport in Africa? After all, the airline reported losses in the last two years. Finally, who stands to benefit in this arrangement? Rwanda is a small landlocked country in East Africa. 26 years ago, the country experienced its worst period in history when over an estimated 1 million people were killed in a genocide. Fast forward, the country has moved on and has become one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Kigali, Rwanda's capital and the most important city is currently served by Kigali International Airport. It's the country's largest airport and has an annual capacity of 400,000 passengers. In the last few years, due to the rapid economic growth of the country, the airport has seen annual passenger traffic well over double its capacity. In 2014, the airport received much needed renovation and expansion which improved its services. This was just a temporary fix and would not solve the major issues in the long term. Solutions were desperately needed. To minimize future problems and due to the expansion limitations of the current airport, the country decided to build a second airport in Bugesera, just outside Kigali. The new airport would be the single largest infrastructure investment in Rwanda's history and this would have been impossible for Rwanda to take a loan. So, the country invited foreign investors and in 2016 struck a deal with Portuguese firm Motor Engie. The firm was to pay $818 million for a 75% stake, build the airport and then manage it for the next 25 years. The airport was to be built in two phases. Phase 1 investment of $418 million would build an airport with an annual capacity of 1.7 million passengers. Phase 2 would increase the capacity to 4.5 million. In August 2017, the construction of Phase 1 began and was scheduled to complete by the year 2020. As construction progressed, the Rwandan government all of a sudden decided they wanted a bigger and more impressive airport. President Kagame ordered a redesign of the airport with ambitions to make it the first green certified airport in Africa. This would have been more expensive than the one planned originally. Motor Angel could not deliver and construction was halted in March 2019. In 2018, the Emil of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, had announced that Qatar would invest over 800 million in Africa. Rwanda most definitely identified Qatar as a potential investor and so President Kagame made multiple trips to Qatar. Eventually, the Emil of Qatar visited Rwanda and after holding bilateral talks, Qatar pledged to become a major investor in the new airport. Keep in mind, Qatar Airways is wholly owned by the Qatari government. Under the new deal, the Rwandan government bought back the 75% stake that they had sold to Motor Angel. In turn, Qatar Airways bought a 60% controlling stake. Under Qatar Airways, Phase 1 would now be completed in 2022 with an annual capacity of 7 million passengers. Phase 2 would be completed by 2032 and would double up the capacity to 14 million passengers. The whole project would cost 1.3 billion. So how will Qatar Airways benefit from this agreement? Airports are businesses and they are expensive to run. However, if properly managed, they can generate revenues and even become profitable. For an airline to operate at a specific airport, they have to pay fees which include landing fees, terminal fees, fuel and so on. All these fees are passed on to the passengers by the airline. So, Qatar Airways as the majority owner will be able to determine these fees and receive a bigger share of the revenue. Qatar will also make money through retail concessions, car parking, advertising, car rentals, real estate and so on. Air travel in and to Africa has been steadily growing over the years. Qatar Airways already flies to 24 African destinations. If Kigali becomes its African hub, Qatar will become more competitive in a market currently dominated by Ethiopian Airlines. Finally, after the acquisition of the airport, there were widespread reports that Qatar Airways would also acquire Rwanda Air. No official statements have been released, but it's highly likely to be true. Why? Qatar has over the years acquired stakes in other airlines including British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Latam, and so on. Any deal with Rwanda Air would be very beneficial. This is why. 
In 2017, Gulf nations including Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain and Egypt broke diplomatic ties with Qatar and banned Qatar Airways from using their airspace. Qatar Airways could potentially use Rwanda Air to legally fly over these countries. Under this agreement, Rwanda will retain a 40% stake in the brand new airport. Across the world, airports are major gateways into countries and they are vital components for economic growth. Apart from providing revenue to the government, the airport will open up Rwanda to more investors, tourists and also provide much needed jobs. Through partnerships with Qatar Airways, national carrier Rwanda Air will be able to expand to more international destinations. Do you think this is a win-win situation for Rwanda and Qatar Airways? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments.